Hello everyone, welcome back to Cafe Bagheri. Yes, we are in the backyard, early fall, beautiful weather. We're going to make a Persian Vizi Abgush together today. Vizi is the name of the individual serving size pots that this dish is made in. We're gonna use that, so let's get started. You can make this dish um, on a stove top or you can make it in your uh, conventional oven in the kitchen. I'm going to make it in the in the backyard brick oven here. All right, so as you can see, we've had our uh, white beans and garbanzo beans uh, soak in overnight. Change the water a couple of times if you get a chance, but if you don't have time to do that, it's okay. We also have water um, about six or seven times the size of those individual dizzy pots. We have water um, boiling here and hot and we are ready to start working. So the meat that we use is lamb and or beef. So we need some bone in this dish to, um, to get some flavor from cooking of the bones. And we need about 25, 30% fat in this dish. The meat is lamb, but I had some brisket fat from before when I uh, smoked the brisket. So I'm using some brisket fat. Because this is long simmered, if you use tougher cuts of meat, it's going to render and be tenderized, okay? In the pot, I use vegetable oil, grape seed oil. Got about two to three tablespoons of fat here. We're going to start putting the meat in there. You do not need to put salt and pepper on this meat at this point because the stew itself is going to be flavored throughout the process. So you do this on medium high and make sure these chunks of meat are browned on all sides. One of the ways that you prevent the meat from sticking to the bottom of the pot is the first 30 seconds after you put the meat in your hot pot or frying pan, you kind of keep moving them like that. Okay, that's one trick that will prevent especially if you're doing chicken or um, with skin on. So as you can see, see, the meat is starting to golden brown on the bottom. You wanna get some of that browning on all sides for the depth of flavor. Look at that, see? That's what we're looking for. The pieces of fat like this, you can, you can add them right now when you're sauteing the meat and some people uh, hold them back and throw them in the DZ um, later when we're adding the meat and all the other ingredients. I prefer to also saute the fat pieces a little bit. It en enhances the flavor. So remember, you're not really cooking this meat all the way through. You're just kind of changing the color outside. So we're talking about four or five minutes on each side. I think our meat is pretty much where we want it to be after five, six minutes. Before we put our meat away and go to other ingredients, we want to add the turmeric. This will kind of wake up the turmeric and, and give us the aroma that we're looking for. All right, so yeah, the turmeric in, um, was um, sauteed onto the meat for another two, three minutes. So we're going to take these pieces of meat, store them and then cover it. You can put it on a plate and, and put, cover with foil. I'm going to just put the cover back on this Pyrex dish and it's gonna keep warm. So now we have the base of our flavor in the pot. We're gonna add some tomato paste and briefly just push the tomato paste around to get some color to it. It's gonna darken the shade. Then we're going to add our warm chicken broth. See, this is when we start dissolving all that goodness and flavor at the bottom of the pot. See, I've been keeping some hot water here on the side. With all Persian stews and horeshes, you always need to have a certain amount of water heated at the ready because you don't want to add cold water to your stews and dishes. So we're going to put enough water to fill the dizzies um, throughout this five plus hour process. 
Okay. Bring this broth up to boil and then drop it to simmer. And this is gonna be the reservoir from which we will fill our abgushed dizzy pot throughout the five hours as needed. Okay. We've got our um, tomato broth going right now, simmering. It's time to start filling our little dizzy, okay? As I told you, you could make this on stovetop if you want it and in one single pot for two, four, six people. In the tea houses throughout Iran, because orders come in individually, one person wants one dizzy, right? They, they have been for, for a long time making them in individual size dizzies like this. There are metal ones, there are ceramic ones, there are stone ones. We're gonna make four of them. This, uh, this recipe is gonna be for four people, right? So we're gonna start with our cooked meat that we have kept warm. We're going to divide this meat and bone amongst the four dizzies equally. Just put equal amount in each vessel. There you go. You put equal amounts of everything, meaning pieces with bone, these little pieces of fat. There you go, I'm, I'm pushing it down. See this juice from the meat? I'm gonna add that as well, just dividing it like this. That's all good flavor. All right, so meat is in there. We're going to divide the beans that we had soaked overnight. As you can see, I've poured out the water. So we're gonna divide the, these are white beans and garbanzo beans. You could use garbanzo beans from the can already cooked, but it's not recommended. The, start from dry beans and soak them overnight, okay? Few here, few here. So the recipe, which is available in the comments, calls for one clove of garlic in each pot. I go ahead and cut each clove in half and throw it in there just to provide a little more distribution of flavor as opposed to a whole clove in, in a pot. There you go. We have a teaspoon of ginger that I have minced. This is fresh ginger. This is optional. Some people don't put ginger in, in abgush. Uh, I do. So we put a quarter in each. Now we're gonna put our tomato. These are large Roma tomatoes I'm using. I skin them. You don't want the skin in there, although if you end up with skin in there, it's not the end of the world. What I do is I boil them in hot water for 30 seconds to 45 seconds, then immediately shock them in cold ice water. I didn't have hot water uh, open in a pot, so I dropped them in my little um, tomato broth that I'm simmer in there. I'm gonna cut these in half, like so. I'm gonna drop one in each of these. All right, now we have all the initial ingredients divided equally in our four dizzy pots. We're gonna go over there and fill them up with liquid, with that delicious tomatoey broth that we have been simmering. So we're gonna go all the way to about a three quarter inch from the top. As you can see, I have a little bit of broth left because I was letting it simmer as we were preparing for filming. You need to have this simmering with water in it all through the five hours that you cook in this stew. Add some more water to this goodness right here to make sure this has always got enough water because you're gonna use this later ladle to, to keep topping them off in the oven. Again, let me emphasize that these are individual size, but for your family of two or four or eight, you could have a bigger thick bottom stew pot or a Dutch oven like that. So um, I could have cooked the whole abgush in this pot and then go all the way to the end, but I'm using these because these are individual size and we're gonna like serve it to different tables or whatever. So we are ready now. We're gonna put the lid on these and go to the oven. As you can see, I'm using a pan, a cooking sheet. As you go through the process and you keep opening and adding water and um, stirring, there's gonna be some spillage. I don't want it to spill on the oven floor. It's gonna be contained in this pan so it makes it clean and easier, right? Make sure 
that the fire is pushed back sufficiently to make some room in the oven opening. I'm gonna push these to the inner edge of that pan. The inside of this guy is now very hot. It's like seven, 800 degrees, but we want it where I'm, because of my previous experience, I know that right under the arch is about 400 degrees right here. We're gonna park him here and then we're going for the first hour and a half. Check the disease once every 20 minutes or so, stir it a little bit and add some of that simmering broth into it um, as needed, right? It's been, uh, it's been about 20 some minutes into our first hour and a half. Especially in your home oven, you don't want to leave the oven door open because it cools down. So you just basically carefully bring this pan out and start checking. Look at this. See, this one's boiling actually. That's the one that was facing the fire. These are all hot. So we don't really need to add much liquid, just a little bit. There you go. And what I would do is I use a small to medium spoon to kind of reach under and do a little bit of stirring, push the tomatoes down. Look at that, see? I'm gonna just kind of bring everything up and push that down. Same here. This is all we needed to do. We're gonna put the lids back on and put it back in. So during um, the five hours, every 20 to 25 minutes, you wanna do this check. There you go. I'm gonna push it all the way close, right under that second arch. There you go, that's about four, 450 right there. All right, we've gone an hour and a half of simmering in the oven. And now we're gonna check, add some more ingredients. We have green bell peppers, look at this. These are really hot. Okay, so we're going to kind of agitate them a little more. They're ready to go. Okay, first thing we add in is we're gonna divide these cut up green bell peppers. This is about half of a large to medium bell pepper. We have one dried Amani lime for each. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna basically cut them in half, like so, and just throw them in, okay? Be very careful when you cut these, don't cut yourself. There you go. This was our small to medium onion, white or yellow onion. I shredded it with a box shredder and kept the juice in there. I think I put a little too much liquid in the little metal ones the last round. So here's what I'm gonna do, because I know I'm gonna put potatoes in these, and these two metal ones did not boil as intensely as the other one. So I'm gonna get some of the juice from those into the ceramic ones to make room for potato. We have a couple of medium to large size new potatoes, or red potatoes as they're called. Here, I'm gonna push that in there. See, we adjust as we go. So, there was a little too much broth. Just make room for that. Now, let's see. All right. Remember, we have, we still have three and a half hours of simmering to do. So this is gonna all work itself out. So far, we haven't put any salt and pepper in there. We're gonna start doing that. I use kosher salt. You can use table salt or sea salt. All works. Now in the next two hours, it's gonna simmer and we're gonna check once every 20, 25 minutes like we did the last hour and a half. We can add a little more of this onion. We are where we want to be right now. Cap them off. And they're going to go back in for two hours. All right. Our two hours stretch has just ended. I checked um, the disease 
once every 20, 25 minutes. Now we're going to check, see where we are. It smells awesome right now. We need to add a little bit of liquid. So this um, process of adding liquid throughout the five hours, it greatly enhances the depth of flavor in this dish. Flavors in there just start melding together and it's just awesome. There are four things to go in there. Um, your intense aromas like saffron and cinnamon are better added later in the process, especially saffron, because it loses some of its intensity when it boils and simmers for a long time. We have four tablespoons of saffron solution. We're gonna add about a tablespoon to each. I always keep saffron solution in the fridge, so this is a lot more than the allotted four tablespoons that we talked about. A little bit of cayenne pepper. Look at the recipe. I do this to all of my stews and liquid dishes for added kick. It's not enough to be hot really, just enough to give it a little wake up your flavor buds. There you go. That's that. Split the cinnamon in four. There you go. Now comes the acid. The traditional authentic uh, way to do this is with um, sour grape juice or verjou as the French call it. Um, you can use lime juice or lemon juice if you can't find the sour grape juice. Sour grape is early in the season, like late summer, when the grapes are not sweet yet. They're the tartest and sourest, so they juice them. It's kind of a cross between lime, lemon juice, and your vinegar. There you go. So I think we've added everything. We're going to give it another stir. So we've Cook this so far an initial hour and a half, checking and adjusting. Then a total of two hours, checking and adjusting, adding liquid. And then I, we added um, ingredients along the way. This was the last set of things to add. Everything's really cooked. We just extra tenderize it and giving it an extra hour to hour and a half. I'm gonna go hour and a half to complete the prescribed five hours here. So I'm gonna use this clean spoon to do one last flavor check. And a little more salt. Oh, this sardine is so good, so aromatic. Now we're going to start the clock back up for another hour and a half and go towards the finish line. Hey there, um, it's been five hours and all throughout I have added spices and other ingredients that were needed, checked added liquid from the hot um, kettle. It's five hours, let's check right here. We are going to take one of these out and show you how it's gonna be served. The broth, the liquid, as well as the solids in there. Check this out. Check this. Oh, can you smell this? Okay, yeah, this is the result of five hours of slow simmer. Uh, before I serve this, let me tell you, this, uh, I'm a bit of a, a food geography and food history um, student. So this same technique to make dizi abgoust, there's an example of it in every culinary culture that I've looked at. Brazilians and, and from Port Portugal, the feijoada, the same thing, pork and beef and meats with beans slow simmered. And you know, American Southern chili, if you think about it, is pretty much following beans and meat and vegetables, and it's about the same. The French cassoulet is almost the same technique, right? There is the liquid gold in here that can be enjoyed a certain way. And then the solids are gonna be mashed into a minced meat. So this is how we eat it usually. This is the Persian way of enjoying abgush. So what you do is you basically, check this out. You offload the liquid into a bowl 
but prevent all the solids, meat and beans and potatoes and everything to come out. Then we're going to dump everything else in this bigger bowl. Now, there are people that don't do this separation. In other words, they just dump the liquid and the solids in a bowl and eat it like a dish, right? And, and just use a spoon with some bread and some sides and enjoy this. The majority of people, the tea house way of enjoying this dish, the starter for this is gonna be some day old bread or two day old bread, stale flatbread, Persian flatbread, sangak or taftun. They do it like this. These pieces of bread, flatbread, like I said, they have to be a little stale. So this uh, soaked up uh, bread with all the goodness and flavor, it's called tilit. Tilit is, is a wonderful starter for this meal. It's awesome, awesome. Okay, so, so you basically start with tilit and then, so you get all of the bones, you have to care to find and remove all of the bones that we left in there for flavor, right? There you go. This by itself can go in a, in, in a flatbread, make a wrap, put some onions and whatnot, and pickles, and makes a nice um, wrap sandwich. But here's the kicker. Here's gusht kubide, the minced meat. So there are these wooden mallets that, that are traditionally used to mash and mince this meat into a pulp and then you serve it with sides. But here's what I use. I use a thick bottom jar. There you go. This is how the minced meat, the gush kubide, from the Persian dizi is created. Like I said earlier, you could have used a huge pot and cook the five, five plus hour process of cooking this, do it for the whole family, for four or five or six people. So it comes out of the bowl. What I usually serve it with is either white onion, as the recipe calls for it, or um, scallions like that, and just decorate it a little. It's definitely, um, it's got that kashke badem june, uh, the Mediterranean dip, um, um, tapas, maze vibe, and it makes a perfect plate uh, for an afternoon for you to enjoy. So here you have it. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you saw, please like this video, share with your friends and family. If you haven't subscribed yet, this is a perfect opportunity to subscribe to this channel. Hit that little bell button so we can keep in touch. And I do hope to see you right here at Cafe Bagheri very, very soon.